I'm Michael West, Technical Product Manager with VMware. In part one of this video series, I described the capability to automate the lifecycle of VM instances using VMware curated base images and Cloud Init for configuration. Now we will use the Cloud Init transport to configure a VM with a native Ubuntu 2204 image with no VMware specific configuration added. Let's begin by seeing the changes in our YAML specification. The persistent volume claim will give us a 10 gigabyte disk to hold our TensorFlow notebook container image. The config map will hold a base64 encoding of the cloud config file, will be read by the VM service and added to the VM's extra config. We will see the unencoded file in a moment. The virtual machine specification references an Ubuntu image based on Jammy Jellyfish version 22.04. Any Linux image running OpenVM tools and CloudInit 21.3 or later can be used with the VM service. The VM metadata section references our config map and uses the CloudInit transport. This means that CloudInit is handling the VM bootstrap configuration and application of the user data. VM guest customization is not being used. We are also adding a virtual machine service to provide a load balancer for ingress to this VM. If you want to see exactly where the VM service adds the user data read from the config map, jump into the managed object browser, find the VM and choose config. In the extra config guest info fields, Networking info is in the metadata field and your user data is in user data. This is a gzip of the base64 encoding of the data in your config map. Let's now take a look at the cloud config and see how we are setting up the VM to run the TensorFlow notebook. We begin with defining a Docker group and a VMware user and add the user to the Docker group. We then add the source list and install the Docker packages. Next, we set up the disk and file system for our persistent volume. Finally, we make a directory on the persistent volume to cache container images and bind it to the default Docker image directory, install Docker, and run our TensorFlow notebook container. Before this cloud config is added to the config map, we base64 encode it. To create the VM, we apply the file containing the VM config map persistent volume, and VM service specifications we have seen. We list the running VMs and get our VM's name so we can access the new VM web console. Developers can now troubleshoot bootstrap issues without needing to log in to vCenter. The kubectl vSphere plugin has been extended to return a short-lived link to the web console through the Kubernetes API server load balancer. Opening the link in a browser gives the VM's console. Notice that we can see the pull complete messages as the layers of the TensorFlow notebook container are being downloaded, and a link with a token that can be used to authenticate to the app. Let's SSH into the VM and list the running Docker containers to verify TensorFlow is running. The docker exec command jumps us into the running container where we see the TensorFlow banner. From here, we can cat the token file in order to access the UI through our browser. We use the virtual machine's IP with our token and we can run a model and see some of the results. VM service and cloud init, enabling developer application deployment automation with vSphere 8.